Hi everyone, Oksanti here again. I'm an artist and a vector repeat pattern designer. And in this live uh, broadcast, I'm going to talk about uh, my three favorite, favorite Adobe Illustrator actions for creating uh, vector repeat pattern designs. Uh, they saved me so much time over the last nine years of my work life that I wanted to give back and share them uh, right here with you all, hoping they will help you too. So uh, let's jump in and I will show you how uh, they work. So first of all, there's the, I created a workspace. This is my uh, standard workspace of late. I always change them up a little bit, but this is the late, latest version. And you can see that all my actions are front and center right here. I have a lot of them that I created over the years. And uh, I will share my three, let's say, group of actions that I use most often for repeat pattern design. So, yes. Uh, so the first tip would be to set up your workspace to use actions effectively so you don't, that you don't have to pull them up uh, all the time. So I have the actions window right here. And... Um, what I wanted to share is that the actions are uh, basically little scripts that run within Adobe Illustrator and they uh, help us uh, perform repeatable uh, actions, repeatable steps in our process uh, easily and super, super fast once we set them up. It's pretty easy to learn how to set up actions and it, uh, the time investment is definitely worth it so that you can save a lot, a lot of time in the future. Okay, so to create actions, you can uh, go to the button mode from this little menu right here. Uh, and then our actions start looking this way, the same actions, but now you see there's the custom actions folder. And uh, you can basically see what's within each action and you can even edit each action. So uh, let's get started. Let me show you how first how they work right here. And normally I work with the artboard of 600 pixels by 600 pixels. And this is the template which contains repeatable uh, symbols, basically, the symbol will repeat itself all over around here. And if the changes I make within the symbol will repeat. So this is my process of how I create patterns. You might have your own process, but I'm just showing how it works for me. Okay, so let's just create, uh, paste a few colorful shapes that I'm going to demonstrate how I use my favorite, favorite symbol, sim actions for pattern design. Okay, so the first batch of actions that I like uh, and I created that I really, really use all the time for my process is these little, these four actions right here, up, down, left, and right. So what do I mean by that? So for example, up, let's select this triangle and click on up. And you can see that it basically copied itself up 600 pixels. The same you can do for down and right and left. So if we go out of here, you can see that they all seamlessly repeated itself. And now if we just add just a few more in instances of these, um, these little uh, elements right here, we can basically create some sort of a quick pattern. This is not a real pattern, but just to show you the technical side of it. So basically, uh, they repeat itself in this manner and using these actions. Otherwise, I would have gone to the uh, move object, then move, uh, transform, move, and from the here, I have to adjust horizontally, vertically, and these all these settings each time if I want to move a pattern exactly, an uh, element exactly 600 
pixels to any direction. And this action makes these actions that I pre-recorded make them work very, very easily. So these four are awesome. So I will just show you what they look like inside. So basically, you, I selected the ob object first and then it copies it, pastes in front of it and moves it horizontally zero, vertically 600 uh, points. And by then you don't leave a copy. So basically this is how it looks like. And the same thing for down, same thing for left, and the same thing for, for right. So basically these four are super helpful so that you can super quickly uh, locate the same elements on your pattern um, and copy them uh, exactly in a repeated manner. So these four are awesome. Okay, let's sh let me show you uh, the next uh, two actions. A little group of actions are which I really really like are ten percent bigger and tell ten percent smaller. So you just have this, and then it if you click it goes bigger. If you click on this, it goes smaller. Why I like that so much is that you can select just a few different. Uh, elements and just make them bigger or smaller at the same time and yeah just play with it and I really like it for giving some interest to my pattern pattern designs and they really help these little actions really really help so these are very useful two very useful actions that I enjoy that are worth investing your time in to create and the last uh, batch of actions is oh it's not actually a batch it's one action that I find it very useful it's called test swatch uh, circle that this basically is te tests my, my my swatch so to create a swatch first uh, we are going to use the action that I another action that I like it's called make swatch so I have all these symbols right here I select the middle one create make swatch and it basically I have this swatch right here. So this is the swatch that sometimes I would, let's say, uh, send to the manufacturer because sometimes they need uncut uh, swatch like this with all elements repeated. But most many times, if I, for example, produce patterns for microstock, I um, like to, I need to cut them and have a perfect 600 by 600 um, square with my pattern tile inside. So what I do now, I have this uh, expanded symbol with the uh, repeat. What I do, I uh, use a, a script. I could not create the action for this, so I use a script which is called uh, Magic Eraser 6. Start. There you go. So these scripts are also uh, very useful for automating your pro work in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So now we have perfect 600 by 600 pixels. So, okay, and let me show you how I use the last that I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, is called test swatch circle. So I drag this over to our swatches panel. So now we have this little the test uh, pattern right here. And I select this pattern in the swatch, new pattern swatch one and I click test swatch circle. There you go. This is what happened. Just automatically it created a big circle. I like to test my patterns in the circle. Of course, this pattern is just for the quick demonstration purposes, but basically what happens here is that uh, I can check if all my elements are cut properly. And on this one, I don't see any problems with this pattern we can actually so I can show you for example if we wanted to see how it would sh show a mistake is that for example let's create a square which is not correct right here let's put it back take this white thing out background out let's say if this would be our swatch Let's create another swatch, take this away, okay, and let's select this one and use this test swatch circle one more time. 
and ready, steady, go. All right, so you see now that there will be a mistake. So you can see all these white lines. So if you don't do the background correctly, exactly 600 by 600, all these white lines will show up. Or if you don't copy an element properly, then the element will just show up right here. So it's pretty easy way to test your pattern. So there you go. Basically, these are three, but I also showed one more <laughs> action groups that I really, really like for my pattern design work. And I also have a few tips for you to show you. And the first tip is uh, it's very nice to use uh, keyboard shortcuts for uh, to start actions and that saves so much time. And it's even faster than clicking on a button right here. There, I use both button method and keyboard method. And also, uh, keyboard shortcuts are also very helpful too if you want to create an action within an action. So if you have a keyboard shortcut, you can just press the keyboard shortcut of an action while already recording an action. And this way, you can basically um, batch few actions together inside one. And it, it's, it's helpful when you have an action, then a, some uh, thing that you, for example, move or do to an object, and then another action. So uh, keyboard shortcuts are super helpful in this respect. And another tip is always save your actions in a batch so that you can use them again next time. Uh, next time you restart your computer or when you have to move to another version of Adobe Illustrator. And uh, in my experience, all the actions, you re when you get used to them, you really want them on your new version. And if you don't save them, it's pretty hard for you to recreate all of them, if, especially if you have as many as I do. So it's definitely very helpful to save them and uh, write somewhere. And I have it in my Evernote account in my Evernote um, a note that where my actions are and how the file is named so that every time I move the Adobe Illustrator versions, I can, uh, I can basically uh, look it up and pull it up and load the actions. And how you load the actions, you go right here and you have here load actions. And uh, you can also reset actions and save actions. So this is super useful. And to so it's, now it's grayed out, but if you go to button mode, click on the folder right here, and then you see. So you have all these app, uh, options now, save actions. So that's pretty awesome. I really like all of these features. And um, just a very quick way to show you how to create an action is basically, let's just create a shape right here, some color. And for example, uh, we want to do something to this shape. So basically, we create a new action right here. OK, it says new action, name. Let's say, let's say test, custom actions. Let's, I like to give it some color, as you noticed. <laughs> and you can do the function keyboard shortcuts right here. And you just press record. And for example, you want to copy and paste in front. See, it, it shows up right here. Copy and paste in front. And then you want to move, transform, and for example, oh, wait a minute. Let's do object, transform, scale, and let's do 150%. OK, there you go. And uh, let's move right there. So you can now we performed all these actions, and this this is what shows up: copy, paste in front, scale 150, and move horizontally 173 um, points. Okay, so this is what we can we already have. We can stop. So this red uh, begin recording button is now gray. So this is basically we recorded our action. Let's see if we delete this one. Select. Press on the test and click this triangle, play current selection. Click. Let's see if it works. Okay. Sometimes it's not 
sometimes it might not work as in this case yeah you have to really play around with why is it not working um let's see okay copy paste in front scale mm -hmm. yeah Oh, the, I, I'm pretty sure we have to try again. Mm, right. So that, it is a little bit of a tricky work to get started, but once you have them all, it really works very well later. Okay, let's try again. Okay, let's do a, mm, what can we do? Like some kind of shape like that. group and object transform reflect vertical something like that okay let's see if this one works test and play cannot find the swatch I'll apply swatch oh I see oh okay so I see my mistake right here so what we can do is we take this and just delete it and basically mm -hmm, yeah I figured out so it wants me to create one right there then delete it and then not delete but group uh, select it and then let's try it. Yeah, so basically now it's grouped and it reflects. Let's see if what we can do, if we do it one more time and one more time and one more time and one more time. Yeah, so you can basically sometimes create interesting geometric patterns that way. So you can create one pattern and then run your action multiple times and see what shows up that uh, sometimes is the way that I like to play with my elements but that was a good demonstration that sometimes first try does not work and you have to figure it out but uh, once you're done it really helps so I'm hoping my little demonstration right here has been helpful for you in learning a little bit about Adobe Illustrator actions and some pros and cons but so the cons are that they are a little bit tricky but the pros are that um, they are super helpful once you get the hang of them and um, if you have any questions or experience with this uh, topic about the adobe illustrator actions please leave your comments below this video and we can all discuss and maybe learn something new and if you have a favorite actions that you like to share with all of us um, please leave your them in the comments below as well uh, if you like this video please like it and share with somebody who might want to learn more about Adobe Illustrator actions and um, thank you so much for watching once again and uh, grow love and create uh, Oksanta here bye